All right, we're here today working on our 1953 Alcourt Sunfish Zip. We're going to put some um, epoxy resin and hardener on the bottom part of Zip's uh, repair patch, which is right over here. We want to see if it's going to darken up like the rest of the uh, wood on the boat. We also want to seal it. The primary thing is to seal it. Uh, so if any moisture gets on it, uh, it's not going to, plies aren't going to pop loose or it's not going to check those types of things. So when we did zip the first time, we used West System uh, epoxy resin and hardeners and gave it a nice uh, finish. So for uh, sake of continuity, that's what we're going to go with this next time. The um, people always kind of just throw it out there, epoxy, like everyone knows automatically what that is. But it took, took us a little while to track it down and search it. But epoxy is a coating, a sealer that's uh, two parts. It's made up of a resin and a hardener. And for the uh, West system, their basic uh, resin is called a 105. And then you can use different hardeners, either fast, slow, extra slow, or what we're gonna use is a two, called a 207 hardener. It's a special clear hardener. By special clear, they mean uh, it doesn't uh, kind of turn yellow like some of the other uh, hardeners do and epoxies after you put them on. Um, our friends at uh, Total Boat, uh, we bought the uh, West system from them and they sent us some uh, free total boat to try out. So we're not going to do that on zip because like I say, we're trying to stick with the same system that we had on there already. Don't want to get into any kind of incompatibilities with the with two different systems. So they, uh, they sell the same thing. They've got the, uh, the resins and in this case, we, um, they sent us a medium hardener and I'm just going to make an assumption and, think that that means it takes a medium of amount of time to harden. Now as far as time goes, uh, if you're in a hot climate, everything uh, thickens up and gels and tacks uh, faster, so you want to use a slow hardener. If you're in a cold climate and you want it to harden up, then you use the uh, fast hardener. I think you can go down to temperatures. You can check the websites for either one, West or Total Boat. Probably down as low as 40 degrees or so Fahrenheit. So. You can mix them a couple of ways. You can pour it, you know, equal parts. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to use the pump system for West because it makes it uh, easier. So let's see if I can see right on the total boat, it says a two to one mix ratio. So the other way you can do is uh, both companies will send you uh, pump systems. It's a 300 mini pump. And you'll get uh, all of these, all of these pumps and all of these tubes and then the next thing you got to figure out is oh which one do I want to use so for the uh, this West system it says right on here it says 105 a so these are a size containers so we're gonna see here let me get this on the shot we're going to use group size a containers and it tells us to use this resin 105 resin pump and it wants us to put this uh, shorter blue tip on it so it'll fit in the can and that's in this little uh, packet here of different size tips so that you can get the maximum right all of the hardener out of the can you don't leave any left uh, behind because it's it's not cheap the first thing that happens is the can show up with the little metal cap in the top and I'll just take the, uh, the awl and poke a hole in it and uh, pry the cap out and get rid of that. So we've done that on both of those already. You can save the caps. I usually just leave the pumps in them. I don't know if that's best practice or not or save the caps put the cap back on. To me that would leave a little bit of your product trapped in the pump and I don't know if that's best or not. So we found out this is the uh, it says on the top it's the it's the resin pump so we're going to pull this tube off and we're going to go get this little blue tube uh, put that on there it's got a little angle on the bottom so it should fit down to the close to the bottom of the can that looks right
and that said right on here now on the uh, for the you have two different there are four see four different types of hardener four different size cans so 205 206 207 209 we're using the 207 so it says to use this longer two and seven eighths inch tube so look at the two tubes that are left by process of elimination i'm going to guess it's this one and i've still got two of these with two different size caps well one of them ain't going to fit and that's this one so here's the here's the cap that fits we'll take the old tube and pull it out get it offside put the new tube in looks like that's going to be about the right depth so we'll drop it in the can and this uh, system this type of hardener was recommended to us by our, our marine carpenter friend Keith he does a lot of fine end uh, finishes on nice yachts interiors he said since we keep zip indoors most of the time he said just put this special clear hardener on it and you can total boat sells a similar product um, you can uh, and then you don't have to worry about varnish unless you want to because it's not going to be out in the UV all day long so now that we've got these different size pumps uh, we can go one to one you know one pump each and um, mix everything up uh, let's see. Oops, let's make a mess here. So, a little bit in there. One. Get the pump primed a little bit. There's one. Let's just go ahead and go two. So set those to the side. Now you can. Mix it up. Uh, we hummed the Jeopardy song a couple times. You get the picture. Now this right here is an example of why we like to buy thickened epoxies that are already in a two-part caulk cartridge. They've already got the thickener added because if you were going to add thickener to something like this, you'd have to, you know, guess and scoop it in and add it and be mixing it up and hope you didn't leave a clump of some dry bits down in one corner of your pot and uh, you're going to spend a lot of time fiddling with that. Or you could just throw it in a caulk tube and uh, squeeze it out and uh, get on your way so that's what we're doing here that's about long enough for me you don't want to mix up too much epoxy at one time because you might uh, it might all start to cook off and the bigger batch you have in a small area is going to cook off faster now we're going to take this uh, this is the inside part of that repair piece and put some uh, this uh, clear Now since this is on the inside, I'm just going to brush it on and not worry too much about whether it's pooling in any places or not. Because when I get ready to go on the outside, I'm going to um, use a roller to uh, roll it on as, as thin as I can. And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to take a roller and cut it half, I'm going to come back and squeegee uh, some of it off and go for uh, go for thin coats on the uh, when I do it on the top side where the first time we did this uh, west system back in 2013 I didn't know so I just kind of rolled it on and tipped it and um, on a vertical surface came back the next day and it some areas looked like uh, pancake syrup had dripped down the side so I had to scrape those off with a razor blade and uh, then come back and fix it up and do it again. So like I say, what we're, what we're trying to do is figure out if this, uh, how much this piece of Douglas fir 
processed and made in 2020 is going to darken up compared to the piece of uh, fur that probably came from a different tree into a different part of the country back in um, back in 1953. So it does uh, it does darken it up quite a bit. That'll soak in and probably get a little bit darker. We'll come back in a few minutes and do a little bit more. We want to see if we're going to have to do any type of a stain before we um, before we do the rest of it. So there it is right now. Let's uh, let's fly you over to the boat. Everybody get ready to go vertical a minute. Come over here to zip. Here's the here's the area it's going to go on. So. So, well, we can see some issues right now. There's two different grains probably may have come from two different uh, woods even. So that's going to, that's not going to darken up the same. So we might need to get some stain and go and get it all one color. I don't think this is the B side. This is the not as good side. This other side is all one, it's all one color. So we're going to. Swing you back around, so everybody hold on. There's the sunfish rudder wall. Put it back down over here. I'll show you a little trick that Louie, uh, the tips from a shipwright, taught us. He says you take these little screws and you can lay them down on your work surface. And they're going to act as a little, uh, as a little shelf that we can put this on and it's going to hold that piece up off the uh, off the table while you work on it and you can put stuff on the other side and you might have a little uh, you might have a little indentation on there but you probably wouldn't be able to see it from a galloping horse so then we go in and put uh, Some more of the west on this side. When I first put it on, I'm not really caring about grain too much. I'm trying not to. I'm just trying to get the product onto the surface. And then I can come back and go with the grain. Try to keep everything. Uh, Keep it looking nice as it dries. The first coat, you might actually uh, sometimes we go cross grain just to get it down into the uh, into the grain. It acts as a fill filler and a wood sealer. And the other thing I don't know for sure is if now that it's sealed, will it even take stain? Well, we'll find out. If it doesn't, you might sand it back down and open up the grain again and then put the uh, put stain on it. If we decide to go that route, I'll leave it uh, up to the skipper. That'll be the uh, that'll be the skipper's decision. Or maybe we leave it uh, maybe we leave it whatever color it comes out as. We'll figure that as out as we go along because um, Okay, it's gonna it's gonna look better than what we took off. That's that's what came out of there, and you can see what what they were running into was this rot in this area here. So at first I thought these were all the way through, but these are actually just thin thinner veneers that they let me get a camera angle that they just glued on top of the rotted plywood beneath it. Who knows? Way back when that's uh, what they had and what they did. So I'm not, not sure why they had a bunch of different pieces and went different ways, but hey, they did. So there's the uh, old plywood. That's what it looked like underneath. So it wasn't, well, like this area here was, was just about rotted all the way through. But the rest of it, there was still a little bit of good wood left. And this area went under the that sweeping combing that the boat has. So when the boat was stored on its side, water would drain down and catch against that combing and that's uh, why the rot was there 
So we're going to let that dry a little bit and then put another coat on and uh, we'll get back to you. But we just wanted to talk about the epoxy systems. And when people mention polyester, what they're talking about is the, the base for it is a, is a polyester resin for different products. It's what would have been used on the boat uh, when they built it. Back in 1953, it, it's, I've been told it's better for building, and then I've been told that uh, by the same person that the epoxies are better for repairs, where a strong uh, joint, a strong repair is needed. And that's by a, a rep that I knew at, uh, at Pettit. So that's uh, information we have and what we've gone with. So you have either polyester or epoxy resin, and we're using epoxy resins uh, for this. West uh, because that's what was on there before and uh, Total Boat has their uh, similar system also. So hope y'all are doing good out there and uh, hope it's a little bit cooler where you're at. We're running right at uh, 95 heat index with the temps in the mid 80s and a dew point right behind it. So it's kind of soupy here in uh, Florida, but uh, we're not, we won't complain too much about it. Hope y'all are doing uh, great and uh, we do appreciate Here's the commercial plug. The to folks at uh, Total Boat and Jamestown Distributors sending us all kinds of fun things to uh, try out and providing uh, all the other products that they sell, the West and the Interlux and Pettits and there's their. I'll tell you what, they do have a great tech team. If you ever have any questions, just uh, post it in our comments and we'll answer you as soon as we can or call those folks at uh, Jamestown Distributors and talk to their tech team. They got decade, well, let's, no, they got centuries of experience answering the phones there, and they can type in your order right as you're talking to them. It'll be out the door that same day. So hope y'all are doing great out there. We'll talk to you soon.